Just wait on you. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. We're gonna uh, we'll call the order at 704. Apologize for the technical delays. And if we can roll call, yeah, no, for Chuck Lewis here, Deborah Cindy Klein here, Ian Law here, Matt Castillo here, Adam McDowell here, yeah, and Valerie Ray Baylor. Valerie's not here, Mayor Paul Gamerat here, and of course, President Jay Dorn. I am still here. Uh, having gotten through that, uh, let's we can stay on if you're able to pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. All right, comes the last meeting before she, before spring ends on us. <laughs> Uh, so so real it is that I that I wore my pink shirt with the my I don't be wearing the first day of spring. So what can we do? Well, uh, as we open up our regular meeting for October, uh, we begin as we do with public comment. One of the key, key moments of hearing from our residents so that we can understand better how we can better serve. Uh, that being the case, we start in the audience here, and then we go online. Uh, if you have something to say, if you would like to stand, uh, if able, state your name uh, and your address as a taxpayer or resident, and you have three minutes to speak. Uh, I saw I saw the uh, the, the, the nod of, from a from a scheme from a colleague. Appreciate that. Uh, anything on the right side? Just the, the wonderful pleasure of residents coming to see us. We we so appreciate you. All. <laughs> Uh, that being the case, and not hearing any there, we will look uh, online to see uh, if we have any. We do have 12 attendants. I do see at least one. I just have a question. Are you, are you, we're seeing, I'm seeing the camera from this side. What do you see? Um, I see us from, from here. I see the camera from, from our side. Uh, on the TV, we just see the welcome message. Yeah, but you you are in the Zoom. You're using yeah, I'm in the Zoom, and I, I'm seeing everybody. Sorry, we're dealing again with a bit of a technical issue, so we're just making sure that we're that you all are able to see us. Um, I do see that Sandy Fox has her has her hand up. Uh, if you were able to promote her, and Sandy, when we promote you, can you just let us know that you're able to see us properly, um, in case we have to, to make sure, because we're seeing on the television, we're not seeing... Um, uh, any images? Uh, yes, I can see you. This is Sandy Fox, 38 Holland Road. And um, I'm not sure if this is accurate, so perhaps you can answer this after I give my comment, but I understand that there's consideration of a 5G tower in Churchill. Um, and if that is correct, I would ask for a public forum to discuss that before any decision or vote is taken. Um, from what I'm reading um, from a scientific journal, the National Library of Medicine, National Center for Biotechnology Information uh, from 2020, it says that uh, the lack of proper unbiased risk evaluation of the 5G technology places populations at risk. Furthermore, there seems to be a cartel of individuals monopolizing evaluation committees, thus reinforcing the no-risk paradigm. Um, and uh, some, uh, the fact that the International Agency for Research on Cancer at the World Health Organization in May 2011 classified RF radiation as to be a possible human carcinogen. There are reasons for us to have a public meeting, I think, before any decision is made, if this is accurate. The other thing I wanted to um, ask about, I, I saw on the agenda about a sidewalk to complete the handicap accessibility of the bus stop, which is great. And I also ask that consideration be given to a pedestrian crosswalk across uh, from um, across Beulah Road at Churchill Road so that people coming from that direction can get to the bus stop. 
Uh, the last I, I recall, there was a sign uh, saying that pedestrians could not uh, cross there. So I think there needs to be protection for pedestrians wanting to take the bus. That's it. Thank you. Hey, and a little bit of clarity on the, on the 5G. Um, and if the solicitor needs to step in, he, he will he'll correct me. Uh, but it's not a question of us considering it. So the state has already made that decision. We actually don't have control on whether or not 5G is, is allowed. So that part is up to the state. What we're trying to do actually is anything we can to put some controls on it. As it currently stands, if we don't do anything, we'll have absolutely no control at all. Um, the, the state, we can't ban it. We can't stop it in that, in that respect. Um, it's kind of supersedious. In other words, the, the laws above us govern it. So we don't have the capacity to say, no, we're not going to have this here. Um, and so there isn't really a, a public forum to say, hey, should we have this or should we have it? What we're actually doing is looking at any ways that we can have some kind of local control uh, regarding the implementation of, of these 5G towers. Uh, Mr. Solicitor, am I, am I missing anything in that space? No, I mean, I, except for the fact that most of these regulations are actually come at the federal level. Federal, thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm sure so, absolutely. So there's F, some new FD, well, they're not really that new anymore, but there's some FCC regulations that govern uh, 5G. And when you say 5G towers, you're really not talking about towers in the traditional, like, giant cell tower uh, sense, but really those these are smaller uh, sort of, I don't know, called, there's sometimes they're referred to as mini towers, but they're often, they're going to be, they're going to be found in the public rights away. And you're, you, you hit the nail on the head that we have very limited, if at all, ability to control uh, the placement and sort of the use of the 5G. There's, there's some really minor exceptions to that, but for the most part, that's the general rule. Uh, the regulations that the borough is considering will also regulate your sort of standard uh, cell towers as well, both uh, the, those at the antennae that are tower-based, uh, which is, again, your kind of classic cell tower, as well as the non-tower-based, which is when you attach uh, one of these antennae or multiple antennae to, uh, to an existing structure. So um, to the extent that there would be public input, if, if this, if we're sort of wrestling a little bit right now with whether or not this will end up in the zoning code or whether it will be a standalone ordinance. Either way, um, that ordinance will be made available to the public for review, possibly even comment at a public hearing. But as you said, uh, we're very limited, with particularly with, with respect to 5G as to our ability to regulate that use. And, and I think just to, I don't want to believe it is kind of in public space. I don't see anybody else having comments. So that's why I'm taking it. Actually, we have a comment. Um, when you're done. Yeah, no, no problem. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. to you right now. Actually. Um, yes, and the our infrastructure committee has met several times on this because, um, like they said, we have very, very little control, but we want to do what we can to make it as safe as possible and also aesthetically pleasing as possible um, for our beautiful community. So we have worked very hard going through a ton of information and and we're work we're still working hard to do as much as we can to do what little, very, very little control we have, because like we said, it's on the federal level to make it as best as we can for our community. I think we find yourself all on the same side of this space in terms of being concerned, understanding the risk. I think, Sandy, your, your points are, are germane uh, to, to kind of the topic at hand. It's just, we actually are in the position to, to say yes or no to this, right. only <laughs> whatever limited that, that we can have. And certainly, I don't want to speak to, uh, to another committee's space, but I'm sure any any public input that came through through this way would be fed over to you all, so that you could you could consider that as well. Uh, looking at any other any other comments on here, uh, again for folks, uh, if you'd like to make a comment, you can raise your hand. When we see your hand raised, we give you an extra second. Uh, I don't like to close public comment unless I know for sure that everybody had the opportunity uh, to comment. Okay, seeing uh, that is it. I appreciate your comments, Sandy, and I appreciate everybody coming on and listening. We're going to move forward uh, after public comment, then on to the ordinary items. Mr. President, I move to accept the meeting minutes from the Tuesday, September 6, 2022, Borough Council Workshop Meeting and the Monday, September 12, 2022, Regular Council Meeting. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion of the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye.
And the minutes are accepted without opposition. This moves us on to the mayor's report. Mayor, if you'd like to have a say before we even have a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Chief Ron Ivey reported to me that there were no critical or significant incidents during the month of August 2022. Our officers handled a total of 1,082 events for a total of 9,994 year to date, consisting of both calls for service and proactive patrol engagements and details, resulting in three arrests. Chief Ron Ackley has reported that the total amount of magisterial fines collected for the month of September 2022 was $625.71, bringing the total for the year 22, $5,248.87. The department's five police vehicles logged 4,081 miles in the past month. Still no word on the delivery of our order patrol car and the replacement of the 2017 Ford Interceptor Total in an incident, in an accident, I'm sorry. The ticket summary for the month of September 2022 was 59 and one traffic ticket, 12 parking tickets and 46 traffic tickets. The chief uh, is passing on information regarding talks about the possible police murder. After several months, much, re much research and many man hours invested, the chief reluctantly advises that the Church of Wilkins Township police merger negotiations, negotiations have ceased. The decision was made by Wilkins Township not to pursue the matter any further at this time. The reason cited for the decision was an impasse regarding certain terms and of the proposed intergovernmental agreement. He can assure the residents of both Churchill and Wilkins Township that all involved have the best, had the best intentions and did their due diligence and always acted in good faith for what they believe to be the best interest of their respective residents. Despite the outcome, the officers of both departments will remain committed to assisting each other and will continue to work hand in hand as always to promote a long lasting solid working relationship. Details and other related statistics concerning the police department during the month of September 2022 are, are, report, are reported on the attached police department records. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to entertain a motion to accept the mayor's report. Moved. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? I would note that we do have the chief present. So then in discussion, I'd be happy to if you have any questions. Uh, the chief can direct it that way as well. Pretty, pretty clear, right? <coughs> uh, all right. Uh, one second. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 And the mayor's report is accepted without opposition. This moves us on to the treasurer's report and the payment bills. Mr. President, I move that we accept the treasurer's report for the month ending September 30th, 2022, and move to direct the finance officer to pay the bills for the Borough of Churchill accrued since September 12th, 2022. Okay. Is there any discussion? As a matter of point, we always uh, read any bills that are above the amount of, uh, looks like normally 50 minutes, we'll go with 10,000 today. Uh, and I know that people can read that now in front of them. It used to be that it was much more novel and couldn't. Uh, but nonetheless, I will still do that. Uh, and that begins with a contribution to the uh, Volunteer Fire Company, uh, Churchill uh, Volunteer Fire Company, at $20,556.70. Uh, the engineer services to Gateway Engineers, the amount of $16,718.25. Uh, our street uh, maintenance and repairs, the Bigley Island Landscape and Construction, the amount of $14,795.77. And our health, dental, and vision benefits through TC, TEC uh, benefits. In the amount of $12,324.18. Uh, you can see there are some other contributions as well. Uh, I don't know if there's any other discussion regarding uh, either the treasurer's report or the paying of the bills. Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And it is accepted the bills will be paid without opposition. Uh, moves us on to action items beginning with number seven. Mr. President, I would motion to adopt the Borough of Churchill Ordinance Number 763, an or ordinance regulating occupancy permits and tenant registration. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the matter? Uh, so this is the ordinance that we've discussed a couple of times and we advertised already. Uh, this is just codifying uh, our standard procedure that is part of the Uniform construction code and uh, inspections for occupancy, you know, for health, safety, and welfare for single family residents and commercial, and then also includes 
Uh, tenant registration, that is a new part, uh, something we haven't done in the past, but, um, you know. Help give us, help give us eyes on tenant Right, right, and making sure that we, uh, you know, if there's any problem properties, we can take care of that. And, and we uh, we know who's living in the borough, so, you know, for safety. Again. There you go. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the motion passed without opposition. Moving on to number eight. Mr. President, I would motion to direct the borough manager to advertise a public notice of availability to review a draft of borough ordinance to adopt by reference to the International Property Maintenance Code in the Valley Mirror newspaper. The Borough Council will consider the ordinance at their November 14th, 2022 regular council meeting. Thank you. Second. I got your quick job. Uh, any discussion? So just to uh, summarize on this one, this is uh, part of the, the Uniform Construction Code for Pennsylvania regularly is updated every three years. Uh, and adopted by the state. And then we, you know, adopt that through the flow through. For some reason, the property maintenance code is not included in that list of normal updates. So we've currently been operating off the 2012 uh, code and we're gonna be updating that to 2018. Uh, I think with COVID and everything, we had a gap where we, we missed the one year. Um, it's just good to stay up to date with the other codes. Appreciate it. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it is passed without opposition. Moving on to number nine, the busy, busy business provision. Mr. President, I would make a motion to pass Churchill Borough Resolution 4544 in approving an agreement with PennDOT to contribute to the cost of installing ADA ramps at William Penn Highway SR 2048 and giving signatory approval to sign the agreement uh, this is part of the 22, uh, uh, Route 22 updates uh, down there at the intersection, and they're going to be installing some up uh, or yeah ADA ramps and sidewalks at the bus stops. And uh, part of that, we have to have a small cost sharing. I believe it's a uh, 10% and around $2,500. Excellent. Uh, is there a second? Second. There's a bit of discussion in the motion, which I appreciate for folks. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we keep going. Mr. President, I would make a motion to direct the manager to work with Turtle Creek Valley COG to advertise the request for bids for the Churchill Borough building renovation project. This is the ADA bathrooms and new female locker room. Uh, and the plans were previously developed per uh, approval by Zero Commute Architecture. Uh, and we'll be looking to bid that project, you know, once the Turtle Creek Valley COG is ready to do so. Good. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? So again, this is, uh, you know, we've mentioned this a couple of times, but these are some uh, needed updates to the borough building here and in our infrastructure. We did receive a grant uh, funding for some of that work. Because we have the grant funding, the Turtle Creek Valley COG that we're part of is actually who's going to be administering the contract and um, you know that grant application and reimbursement. So they'll actually be the person selecting the contractor with our input. So we need to give approval to work with them. And hopefully uh, we're hoping to still do that by the end of the year, but because of that uh, relationship, it may be right after the first of the year. Uh, I would just point out that that's fairly standard in terms of the relationship for, for that type of grant funding that it runs through a COG. So that's not uh, shocking or surprising for us on that end. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 That also passes without a, without a petition. Moving on to number 11. Uh, Mr. Paul, I move to direct the borough manager to advertise a public notice of availability to review a borough ordinance to comply with Pennsylvania Act 57 of 2022. Request for a waiver of additional charges in the Valley Mirror newspaper. Act 57 requires all municipalities, school districts, and counties that levy a real estate tax to adopt a resolution or ordinance directing their tax collector to implement the Act's provisions for the tax years beginning on or after January 1, 2023. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Again, the motion had a bit of a clarification in it for folks. Yeah. I don't know if anybody had any other discussion. Hearing none. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the motion is passed without opposition. Uh, this moves us into uh, discussion items. Uh, we've got first draft on budget. I don't know if anybody had any uh, additional comments so far. I know we've had a couple conversations with us already. Everybody feel fairly comfortable, I take it then, where we are? All right. Uh, I guess the only discussion is that the budget is a work in progress. The uh, finance committee is meeting every Friday during the month of October to review the budget to talk about revenue expenditures to see if anything can be adjusted and modified in order to make sure that our budget is as balanced as possible. Thank you, Brooke. In a, in a, a well, a well stated, well stated. Uh, any other discussion? All right. Move on to. Uh, Staff reports, anything coming around? We'll go kind of around the floor and start with our, our friend in the engineering world. Uh, just a quick update. The paving program was completed. All, um, all necessary items. We did have a pay application included uh, with payment uh, this month. For the initial pay application, there are punch list items that remain. Once those are completed, uh, we will look to close out that project. Um, otherwise, the sewer projects are looking to close down now and uh, close up towards the end of this year. We will need to rebid uh, some of those moving into next year and we're working with the infrastructure committee on that. Appreciate the work. I know it's been a lot of a lot of hard work and progress going into it. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to kind of public works, I'm going to grab public works and, and fire together if I can, Ralph, if you, if you have uh, some availability for me. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so far this year, the fire department's responded to 383 calls. That is approximately 15 calls less than the whole of last year. So we're on a pretty high roll of fire calls. Uh, last week, the guys were at crack ceiling. If you didn't see them, they were out doing some crack ceiling. Uh, we're, we're getting ready to uh, get into uh, leaf season. So we're ready for that and the uh, winter mode. And that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate all that, that you're doing and all that the uh, fire department is doing as well. Uh, while we have the chief here, I don't know if you had anything to, to report beyond the report. I'm not trying to put you on the spot, sir. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. Work my way around to uh, the solicitor. I'll come to the, to the manager if you don't mind me holding you off for a second. I, I have nothing, Mr. President. Sir? Just want to echo what Brooke said. Um, basically, October is budget month, and we got to work cut out for us. We have a lot of Friday meetings and in betweens you know, for questions. Council's welcome at Adam and, and Bill and Valerie are our is the committee for the council and they're putting a lot of hard work in and um, just be patient and hopefully in the beginning of November we have a draft that you'll be able to comment on at the two meetings that you have publicly and then we'll advertise the budget in November and as the normal adopt sometime in December. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, kind of moves us through. I don't know if there's anything else on staff reports from anyone that needs to be covered. I think we're good, but I just kind of knowing that we've had a couple kind of side conversations about the library, so I just want to make sure. All righty. Anybody have any questions with regard to uh, committees? And I will open the table. If anybody wants any, any uh, comments before we adjourn today? Yeah. I always start, um, instead of forgetting you, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to begin with Mr. Mayor because uh, I, I, I don't know what was going on with you the other time. I did, so my apologies. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to mention uh, last Saturday, um, the uh, the uh, Watershed Committee, the uh, Watershed Committee well, yeah. met on Saturday and they planted trees down in our green space. Now, that's a, you know, that space in our borough is, is a big draw, as, as many of you know. Um, there were a handful of people who came down and, and helped out. In the future, you know, I try to send out when I get the information to, for volunteers. They're looking for volunteers to help plant the trees. The goal for Saturday was 1,500 trees. I know they fell short of that number. If you are coming not down Buell toward uh, the, the green space, but coming back, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see up on the hillside, you see all the white tubes. Those are all the trees that were planted on Saturday. So. It's a good, it's a restoration of the, the natural habitat down on the green space. So 
there's people where I with a couple people on, on uh, in the meeting tonight, spread the word that when uh, keep it uh, an eye open and ears for when the next time they get together. Nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Matt, any other Tim? Uh, I don't want to steal somebody's thunder in case they're going to mention it, but for Halloween, uh, I was just double checking, but I believe that's going to be celebrated on the 31st, uh, 6 to 8, if that's so correct. Every time we're sick. Yeah. So just as a reminder, there will be folks out, so be careful. I'm sure as per usual, we'll have extra patrols out. Um, you know, but if you're going to participate, make sure you leave your lights on and, and let people know. And if you're not, make sure you uh, turn your lights off. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sound good? Diane. I won't forget you, Adam. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, anything on, on the tip? Nothing more from me, thanks. Right, well, that again leaves that magical moment between going home. Uh, you know, hopefully, I'll 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 yeah, I had Adam. So, and, good. If I can, yeah. I would like to say, um, as we all know, the general election is coming up on November 8th. Allegheny County is looking for individuals to serve as poll workers this year. So if you have time to serve on November 8th, please reach out to the Allegheny County Elections Division um, and apply to work as a poll worker. It's very important that we have members of our community present so that we can um, utilize the democratic process. Great comment, great comment. Um, and again, that leaves uh, between me and you guys going home. So uh, I will keep it super brief. Uh, again, thanks everybody for coming out once again for the work that all of us made so I know that it's been a wonderful time. And uh, yeah, Halloween's coming up. So, uh, you know, Garrett, Garrett goes, hot, goes hard on Halloween, and uh, my house is, is generally, you know, spooky level 7 to 10, mm -hmm. depending on where I'm at. Uh, so, you know, I hope everyone has a, a safe and wonderful uh, holiday and whatever else is happening for them. So, all right, that being said, uh, I'm not gaveling here. <laughs> I, I have a gavel at home, and I, don't, I never brought it. I've had it since I was in college, because I was in student government in college. Uh, that being the case, though, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Uh, is there a second? Second. All right. Meeting adjourned. Game set match. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Use the hand. You need a cricket back. Yeah. 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 Yeah.